I come to you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. May his peace be with you all. It's wonderful that we are now drawing closer and closer to the end of the year. And it feels like yesterday when we were celebrating a new year. And it was only last hour when we celebrated the Easter weekend. And look at it now. We are towards the end of the year. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to our friends, visitors, and anyone who might be um, coming to, the, to church this morning uh, for the first time. And those who are coming on holiday. And those who are coming to say goodbye because next week they are off to some place with friends and family elsewhere. May troubling messages be with you all wherever you go. Now let us stand for the entry of, of God's word. Please stand. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Dot. May I now invite you to please stand with me as we sing together our opening hymn, Father, I Place Into Your Hands. Please stand. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. My friends and family Father, I place into your hands The things that trouble me Father, I place into your hands The person I would be For I know I always can trust you Father, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for we Father, I want to love the ones that you will draw to you. For I know that I am one with you. For I know that I am one with you. For I know that I am. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. We come before the throne of grace this morning, O Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, your only Son and our Savior, the one who has the authority to link us with you, Father God, the one who has invited us and said, no one comes to my Father except by me. He is the head of this church. He was, he is, he always will be. He is the one who knows us as we come and as we go. He is the one who has journeyed with us at the beginning of this year and is here this morning and has promised never to leave nor forsake us. He is the one, Lord, that has taught us many things 
and he continues to teach us. Through his spoken word, through the nature that we see all around us, through the fellowship that we enjoy with one another, through strangers, even through enemies, even through many difficult circumstances that we go through. He always shows up and says, I am with you. We are gathered there for Lord this morning to celebrate you. To say thank you for being our father. Thank you for what you do in our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for inclining your ear towards our prayers. Thank you for lifting us up when we are down. Thank you for pointing us direction when we are lost. Thank you for clearing up and making things clearer to us when we are confused. Thank you for strengthening us when we are weak. Thank you for healing us when we are sick. Thank you, Lord, for restoring relationships with our family members, our neighbors, our colleagues at work, and all with whom we have conflicts. Thank you, Lord, for not abandoning us. Thank you that you have promised us in your word that whoever comes to your Lord Jesus will never be turned away. Thank you, Lord, that you know that you are here. You are the bread of life, the light of the world. You have invited us, O oh Lord, to come and meet with you this morning, to celebrate you, to say thank you, to ask you questions, to confess to you, to come to you as children who come running to their parent. Lord, you accept us exactly as we are. It is for this reason that we open our hearts to you now, saying, Lord, you say in your word, the Holy Spirit is the one who searches our hearts. Come down now, Holy Spirit. Search our hearts where we rejoice and are excited about things that have happened in the past week and the days that lie before. You were there. And as we celebrate, Lord, accept these our prayers of thanksgiving to you. As we adore your highness and your goodness, we have certain questions that no one has been able to answer. Sometimes we raise questions because we are anxious, because we are tired, because we don't seem to be getting over certain things. But we come to you now, knowing that you have always been there. And in your timing, you shall show and prove and provide answers to those questions. I would come before the throne of grace again this morning, coming to acknowledge that as much as we have heard you tell us what, what to do, we know what is right and what is wrong, and you have been sending your angels and sending your preachers and your teachers and your word is right before us. But very often we choose to pursue the desires of our own hearts. And we put ourselves first. We put our bank accounts first. We put our technologies, our possessions first before you. We come before you now, O Lord, as we open our hearts to you, to the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, saying, Father, we are sorry. Saying, Father, sit, search every person's heart present here now as we ask you to uproot any of those things, thoughts, attitudes, and deeds that are not pleasing unto you. We know, O oh Lord, that we cannot hide anything from you. As we now confess these, our iniquities, our shortcomings, our sins to you in the presence and silence of our hearts, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to minister to each and every one of us now, as we so do. Lord, we thank you that you are able to listen to our heartbeats as you are able to see what it is in our hearts and our thoughts. You are the one who is able to hear our prayers of confession as we, play, as we lay bed before you. All those things that have swayed us away from your grace. But as we confess these our shortcomings to you. We thank you that you have heard. 
We thank you that we have received. We thank you that you have cleansed us and you have forgiven us as you promised in your word. That as we, for, as we confess these our sins before you, you are willing to forgive and to cleanse. We thank you, Lord, that we can now enjoy our relationship with you. We can see you face to face during this service and beyond as a forgiven people. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Father. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from the first Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 33 to 35. First Chronicles, verses... Sorry, technology there. Uh, verses uh, 33 to 35. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, God our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Isn't this fantastic? That as we come before his grace this morning, we acknowledge his greatness, his power, his godliness, that Jesus Christ is coming back to judge the earth. And we are here gathered in his presence to say we're looking forward to that day, O Lord, when you shall say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come into the joy of your Lord, because he's coming back. We are here to say, cleanse us, so that we may be ready for that day. And we go, it goes on to say, because of his goodness, we give thanks to him. And we know that his love has no expiry date. His love endures forever. When we say sorry, Father, his love is poured unto us and we can be sure of that. And he goes on to say, as we commence this service today, we should not be shy. We should not say maybe under a mask, which we no longer wear these days. He says, cry out. Say to God, save us. God, our, our Savior and salvation. Gather us and deliver us from the nations so that we may not be part of this world. Deliver us from this world so that we may be truly your children. That we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. So as we begin this service, let us transform and renew our minds in the knowledge that he is here. In the knowledge that he is ready to receive our thanks. He is ready also to pour his love unto us one more, one more time. Isn't that wonderful? As we therefore accept that love, shall we say together the Lord's Prayer in acknowledgement of who he is. Let us say together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now rise to sing together the words, Thine be the glory. Please stand.
Let us now listen to the word of God as read to us in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, and Marlene is going to read to us. Thanks, Marlene. Jesus heals ten men with leprosy. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And they, as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. May God bless to us this reading from his holy word, and to his name be the glory and praise. Amen. Thanks, Marilyn. We are in a season called Advent. Christelle explained the meaning, the origin, and what it means to all of us. I wish to journey with you this morning in the same context of the Advent and especially in the context of the Christmas season, which as we often call it. What we're going to be dealing with today is to unpack the words of Jesus in the scripture that was read to us by Merlin a few seconds ago. Your faith has made you well. Are you ready? What has made you well? Say it loud. What has made you well? Exactly. Let's just unpack that a little bit. The time, this time of the year, in most Christian families, even those who are not Christians for that matter, they celebrate this Christmas time in various ways. It is a time of thanksgiving. It is a time when even if you have not had the means to bless somebody with a gift, when it's Christmas time, you say, oh, yeah, I must think of somebody and give something to that person. It is a time when we celebrate the year that is about to end. It is often a time when family members come together from near and afar. It is also a time when families, grandparents, children, grandchildren come together and exchange gifts and best wishes. And I wish to, to dwell on that aspect and just remind what we know, all of us. Christmas trees are already lit, I suppose, in some homes. And gifts are already hidden somewhere. They're going to be wrapped and placed under the Christmas tree at some point. But different cultures exercise this aspect differently. In my culture, when that moment comes, when a gift is handed over to a child, a child is not expected to simply extend one hand and grab a gift it is expected as part of culture and respect to put your hands together or do this, okay? And parents use this time of Christmas to see if the children are still upholding those values that have been taught from generation for months or years down to that moment around the Christmas time. And very often, even if a child says this and receives a gift from the father or from the mother, the child cannot just say Ngozi. There has to be a suffix. Ngozi mama, Ngozi dada, 
enkosi puti enkoti sisi those values are entrenched in the in a family and this time of the year often give family members an opportunity to see where are we in terms of our teachings and our values and this time of the year is filled with expectations i'll come back to this particular one parents have their own expectations to give and to love and to receive love children likewise everyone has got an expectation that this christmas even this the weather is going to be perfect the food is going to be perfect every all of us have got expectations not so that this christmas is going to be better than any other christmas yes that's how i feel but then with that background let's have a look at the scripture that we read here today this scripture reveals to us a situation a scenario a story a true story of some people who did not have the pleasure of sitting around the table with their families for for months i don't know how long it was the bible doesn't say so so all the things we're talking about these expectations and good food and all of those things they never experienced that because there is a disease called leprosy and this passage is well known to many of us and it is not my desire to go in detail regarding that aspect of leprosy but suffice to say that If you read the book of Leviticus chapter 3 which I encourage you to go and read please in order to contextualize today's message and Leviticus chapter 4 chapter 3 will explain to us exactly how one is treated when diagnosed with leprosy I'll explain a few points pointers about that chapter 4 then says which is the basis for today's message When somebody has heard leprosy there is a procedure there is a ritual to follow which renders that person clean or um accepted by society Let's just look first at um what then this means in terms of Leviticus chapter 13 When somebody has been diagnosed with leprosy chapter th- verse 3 of chapter 13 says the priest who has the authority to declare whether somebody is sick with leprosy or somebody is clean without leprosy in other words is it says because the priest had pronounced them ceremoniously unclean which means if you were diagnosed with leprosy you were said to be unclean verses 45 and 46 of chapter 13 of the book of leviticus describes what should happen to a person with le- with leprosy anyone with such a defiled disease must number 1 wear torn clothes you can you imagine this beautiful shirt and this blue pants and your dresses everything you're wearing just because you've been attend- uh, diagnosed with leprosy you must change all of that and wear torn clothes you must let your hair on your head hang loose you must have your head uncovered you must cover only the lower part of your face and you must go around when you see a person walking by even from a distance you are expected to shout at the top of your voice and say unclean unclean as if warning the next person never to come close to you and above all you must leave alone leave your home leave your community leave your family and do not mix with with people finally you don't just live alone in your little room out there as if those days of of covid you have to live outside the camp which is an, an a, a a village or a place where people used to live you must live and stay out there in the in the caves in the forest whatever it is but not mingle with people now we are now talking about 10 people who fall within that category they had been living out there in the wild because of the leprosy the disease that they had been diagnosed with now 
Jesus Christ in our today's story comes across these ten people as he's walking to Jerusalem and he's walking along a border between Samaria and Galilee and he's, he now enters a village whose name is not mentioned. Now from a distance these, these, he, these ten men could see there's Jesus from a distance and because they were not allowed to come any closer all they could they could do is to cry and shout. Guess what did they say in shouting? Did they follow the, the worldly instructions that thou shalt shout and say unclean, unclean? The answer is no, they didn't. At that point in time their faith told them this unclean story, it doesn't work for us. We've been saying unclean, unclean all the time and so many times, so many people went by, nothing happened. But this time around, in verse 14, when they saw Jesus, they shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They addressed their concerns, their condition directly to Christ and not paid attention to what the priest had instructed him or them to do. When Jesus saw them, which is the truth about our Lord and Savior, Jesus is able to see us. Even if you are calling from a cave, from a forest, from underground, from any place in the world, wherever the enemy may have chased you to, if you raise your voice and you cry out and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me, on us, on my family, on my situation. Christ is able to hear. Verse 14 goes on to say, Jesus responded immediately and he spoke to the ten of them from a distance. He says, go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourselves to the priest because the same priest who has the authority to bend them to the forest with the caves because of leprosy is the same priest who in terms of the law is, should, should, should examine them again and issue a certificate that are now clean and should be able to go to be mingled uh, with, the, with, the, with their families and community. So Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priest. Indeed. Christ to this very moment, moment is able to respond to our cries. This very moment, Christ is able to speak to us. As he said to, this, to these ten men, go. He is saying the same to us. He is pointing us in the direction where, uh, where he wants us to go. Verse 14 goes on to say, which is a very fundamental statement, as they went, they were cleansed. Can you imagine for a moment by simply shouting, Master, Jesus, have mercy on you. Instantaneously, they were healed. The Bible says, as they went. Can you imagine just turning this way? You are calling this side. As you turn, already you have been healed. You've been cleansed. This is the God we pray. Jesus is able to give an instantaneous response to our prayers. Yes. This is not the first time throughout the Bible, especially throughout the, the, the New Testament, we have seen just how Jesus Christ spoke a word or Jesus did things instantaneously and things changed. You know the story of the, the, the two um, criminals who, hang, who, hanged on the, on the, who hung on the, on, the, on the cross on that day. That one when Christ said instantaneously, today. You'll be with me in paradise. That's one example and many examples in the Bible where Christ has exercised exactly that. Now, the mystery begins now where you had 10 people who were instructed or advised to go and present themselves to the priest. And the Bible says indeed they were all declared cleansed. But out of ten, only one returned to Christ. We may think this happened in one day. No. 
if you read the, the chapter 4 of Leviticus, you see those, that ritual takes a number of days. could be up to 8 days, up to 10 days, depending on, this, on the situation. Now, after all that period, they had already been cleansed by Christ. It was a question of formalities. Now, only one out of those 10 went back to Christ. And the Bible, I like it in verse 15 and 16 of that passage. When, after so many days, he realized that, hmm, actually I'm healed. It wasn't just a moment, a momentary uh, relief. I'm actually healed. So, he was excited. The Bible says, he saw that he was healed. And very often, we doubt that healing has taken place, deliverance has taken place. We doubt things that God is doing in our lives. And until we see and declare that, hmm, actually I'm healed. Even if there's still a pain, you say, actually I'm healed. Because Jesus says, I'm healed. And when, what he says is true. If the Bible says, by his stripes I have been healed, then it means I've been healed. So this is what this one um, patient, used to be patient, the healed person, did. When he saw that, in fact, he had been healed, he did something about it. What did he do? Verse 16 says, he turned back. He said, I'm not going to remain part of the world and be the old person I used to be before I was chased out into the dungeon, into the forest, into, into the graves, and so on, into, into, into the, uh, the wilderness. But I'm going to turn back and leave what is happening here and go back to Jesus. That's what, it, that's what it says. First thing he did, he turned back. Second thing he did, when he came to Jesus, he glorified him, he praised him, he honored God with a loud voice. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. He wanted the whole world to hear the good work that God had done to his life. He didn't just send a WhatsApp say, thank you. Or those things that I say. No. He made it with a loud voice. And verse 16 says, that was not enough. He was not shy about his Jesus. He lay his face down at his feet, thanking him not once, not twice, over and over and over. And I'm sure if that one man was alive today, he would still be thanking Jesus to this very moment. Oh, man. It touches me very much, that part, because I sometimes, wow, well, thank you, Jesus, and I forget about that, I look at something else, and I go on. And I have to take a conscious decision to thank him, even for the pain I have. I have to thank him for everything and all the time. This one man, remember that, and he thanked him over and over and over. Here's something very significant. This love expressed by Jesus was not expressed to a Jewish person. Jesus didn't even ask of the ten men, hey, hands up those who are Jews, hands up those who are Samaritans, those who are Gentiles. No. He just said, go and present yourselves to the priest. Yes. Many of us, in many different ways, have been treated by society as Samaritans, as less of human beings, less preferred, because of various reasons that this world can present to us through the influence of the enemy. We were Samaritans in one way or another. I have been. I'm sure you have been. We have been discriminated against. We people didn't speak well to you. Their attitudes just show that they treat you as a Samaritan. Now, the insignificance of this is what we read about in John 4, verse 9. The Samaritan woman, the story that we know very well. This is an account by the woman herself who says to Jesus, why do you come ask for water from me? And she goes on to say, and that's it, mate, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. But Christ chooses exactly the opposite. He chooses to associate with you and I. No Jews, no Gentiles. No Hebrews, no, 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 no um, Greeks, no Jews. We are all the same in his eyes. Now, Verse 17 and 18 of this passage present a very interesting um, dimension. When Jesus 
asks this one man who came to thank him. says, when are all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Now, I can imagine, it's just at that point. Let's go back to that example of Christmas gifts being opened. Can you imagine when you as a parent are expecting a thank you, Tata, thank you, Grandpa, for a gift given? And the child just simply grabs with one hand and off the child goes. How do you feel about it? When I read this passage, Christ must have felt some kick in the teeth, to use a colloquial language. When somebody has been, when nine out of ten were blessed and they never really thought it necessary to come and say thank you. Now it says, no one returned to praise God except this foreigner. As if he was uh, expressing the nature of God. He's a jealous God. His Jewish children did not come back to him. Only a foreigner came back. As if saying, huh, John, you brought a friend, a friend over for Christmas. And your friend is the one who says thank you. But you don't say thank you to me. It is that kind of my interpretation of what Jesus might have, might, might have felt at that time. Now here is the last verse of what we read today. Very significant. Did you know that when somebody suffers from leprosy, it, leprosy manifests itself in different stages, from small to serious skin rashes to sores that could even cause you know, appendages like your ears, your nose, your fingers to drop. This will drop. So you walk around without your nose, without your ears, without your fingers. Now, when Jesus said, go and present yourselves to the priest, having healed them, the scars were, were healed, right? The scars all over, they were healed. But if they dropped their ears from sickness, those ears were still not there. If the nose was affected and it dropped off, that nose was not there, and so on. Now, this one leper who came back to Jesus, and Jesus says to him, in verse 19, get up, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Get up and go on your way. Your faith, your personal trust in me, and your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. Has restored you to health. What does that mean? And how does that differ from the healing that took place earlier? If they had lost their ears, these ears were restored. If they had lost their nose, their nose, his nose was restored. If some fingers had fallen off, those fingers were restored. He had been fully restored to a normal, healthy person because of that one step of faith he made going back to Christ to say thank you, to say thank you, to say thank you. That's why Jesus says, you, your faith has restored you, has restored you, and has restored you. In conclusion, let us, as we walk towards the Christmas time, celebration, re re thinking seriously about where we are in relation to our Christ, our Savior, whose birth we are commemorating now, and what it means to us. Do we believe that we've been healed? Do we continue to thank him unceasingly, even in spite of all things that are happening around us? We thank him that he is there and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do we proclaim his goodness and, his, and faithfulness throughout this time with a loud voice? Unlike if, I'm sure you have seen many people when you sit around a table at, the, at a restaurant and some people will just close their eyes up. They are blessing the food, but in silence. But then only the lips are moving. Are we able to honor him, praise him, glorify him for the gift of life he has given us with a loud voice? Are we amongst the nine 
who have disappeared into the community and enjoying parties and their celebrations and people are welcoming them back and they forget to go back and say thank you to him? Are we aware that Christ has an expectation of us? He expects us, in verse 18 of what we read today, to come back to praise God for the goodness he's given us. He expects us to do that. Are we prepared to go back and say thank you? During this time, it's a moment to go back and say thank you. And you know what? Most importantly, if you have not made up your mind to go back and say thank you, or maybe you have forgotten that you did say thank you, sometimes you're still contemplating how, you say, how to say thank you. But the important thing is, Christ today is asking for and about you. He says, what happened to the other nine? He's waiting. Anytime we tend to him, he is ready to receive our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving. May God bless to us the understanding of his holy word. To him be glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Father, we, we thank you for your word. Your word is alive and active. Your word is able to separate the spirit from the soul. Your word is a light to our feet and is a, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. We thank you, Lord, that this word shall not return to your void without having accomplished that for which you had sent it. We thank you, Lord, that you, you have reminded us of your goodness. You have pointed us the direction to which to turn. You know, O oh Lord, that you have prepared the priests of this world. You have prepared the Holy Spirit to receive us when we turn to you. We thank you, Father, that you never forgive and you never, you never forsake us. Even if we are lost, your word says a good shepherd will leave 99 out of 100 to go and look for the one that has gone missing. We thank you that when we go astray, you follow us and you go and seek and find us. And you retrieve us and restore, it, restore us to, you, to yourself. We thank you, Lord, for such love. We thank you for the power that you have to be able to overcome the snares of the evil one so that we may be set free. We thank you for the power to deliver us, even if our bodies, Lord, physically, emotionally, and otherwise have been affected by the, what is happening in our, in, in, in our lives. You are able to restore us to good health, physical health, spiritual health, and emotional health. We thank you, Lord, that you are here with us right now. As we look at what is happening in our country and in our world, at this time of the year in particular, when we hear many people getting attacked inside the church by those who are after their possessions, Lord, the evil one is out there like a lion who roars as though he wants to uh, to devour whoever you may find. We bind the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. We release your power, your protection, and your provision upon your children now as we look forward to a time where we can thank you every single moment of our lives over and over. We can never express our gratitude enough to you, O oh Lord. It's for this reason that your Holy Spirit who dwells within us is the one who intercedes on our behalf with groans that are too deep for us to even comprehend. Lord, we thank you that you are not alone. We thank you that you are here, ready to take us through this festive season and beyond. It is a time when traveling is going to, be, is going to increase in our country, on our roads. We pray for traveling messes, Lord. We pray that you will protect those who are that are road users and those who are traveling by other means and modes of transport. We pray, O oh Lord, that families who have lost their loved ones, families who cannot be united with them, with their, with their, with their family members and friends due to various reasons, be it death, be it work, be it um, incapacitation, whatever reason, Lord, bring peace, bring love. Let this time be upon them the celebration of your existence in their lives. Take us now out of this place into the world to celebrate the Christ who lives, who reigns, who conquered, now and forever. Amen. Please uh, join me now as we are um, going to sing our closing hymn, after which we shall remain standing. 
um, for the benediction and then after the benediction the Bible will be um, taken out and then uh, we shall sing the doxology thereafter holding hands together how is that please let's join each other let's stand and sing together majesty peace and love the Lord and thank him for his goodness let the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen Joy!